Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 68. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building for episode 68. Introduce yourself to the audience. Well, how y'all doing, man? My name is Jaquil. You know, I come from uh, South Philadelphia. And, um, you know, I'm here. Copy that. Shouts out to my man Quill. We're going to dive in a little bit later uh, while we got Quill on episode 68, but y'all already know how it goes. Let's hit the rundown. Special announcement before we even get to the rundown. July 31st, July 31st, we're doing How to Hustle Live Show Part 2. How to Hustle Live Show 2, July 31st, 4901, uh, uh, Baltimore Ave at the, at the barn, uh, 3 o'clock. The tickets uh, are available right now. Hit the link in my bio. I'm going to have the physical tickets probably sometime this week. During when the episode comes out. So if you don't get them off the Eventbrite, you can get them from me. I'll slide up on you and drop the tickets off. The tickets is $15. Make sure y'all come out. We was eight tickets shy of a sellout the last time, y'all. I need these eight tickets going. So get at me. <laughs> now, Make sure y'all get those tickets, man. Copy that. Custom Hustle World. Custom Hustle World is my clothing line. That's at, at Custom Hustle World on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, you know, custom jerseys, custom jackets, the sweatsuits, the t-shirts, uh, the baby jackets, the baby jerseys, you name it, we got it. Uh, H2H Cleaning. At H2H Cleaning is my cleaning company. We could pretty much do anything except plumbing. Um, okay. Anything yeah. there, HVAC, uh, carpet installation, carpets, floors, uh, carpet cleaning, cleanups, cleanouts, we got it all covered for you. Uh, now, the radio rundown. E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock on the E-Block Radio Network. GFT Radio, 2 o'clock every Tuesday. Wednesday is 216 to Blend, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Thursday is WTNUPhilly.com, 1230 every Thursday. Friday is 10 o'clock on the I Say Podcast Radio Network, excuse me, 10 a.m. Then it's THC Media, Saturdays at 10 a.m. We're still looking at filling that Sunday slot, y'all. All right, episode 68, Quill in the building. This oh, yeah. one is... How did you become a man? The reason we doing how did you become a man is because man quoting knew each other since we was kids. Yes, and sir. A lot of a lot of things that you've seen could have got you to turn left, right. A lot of people just just died, just got killed, and all of that. So right. we want to know is everybody has birthdays every year, but that don't, that that doesn't mean that you evolve into a man. That Absolutely. Means you got older. So Absolutely. we want to know is how did Quill become a man? All right, well, you know, basically a little short story of mine. You know, everybody had hoop dreams coming to South Philly, you know, back in the day. We all had the Burgundy dreams. team, year one over twos, number 12. Yeah, we all yeah, had yeah, dreams, man. you know. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Kenyatta Bay, man, you know, who Point Brains Youth Development League over at 19 in Washington. I mean, for about 25 years plus, you know, kept us out of trouble and kept, you know, man, you guys, like, man, you alive, you feel me? But yeah, um, I was on like episode four or five. I had y'all on. We talked all about that. He actually one of the reasons why, you know, I am a man. You feel me? He was one of the good role models, you know, that in the, in, the, in the neighborhood, you know, and wanted to just keep us off the street and keep us out of trouble. But, you know, I've been I, I went through a lot of things um, when I was young. I lost my mom at 16. Um, dad wasn't really around. So I basically was raised by women. You feel me? Strong mm -hmm. black women. You know, and um, women raised the best men, you feel me? And um, I was a little wild, went to um, Glen Mills when I uh, was younger, whatever the case may be. I still wasn't a man, I don't think. I think I became a man when um, I realized you ain't had to indulge in negative activities to um, pretty much fit in with everybody. Once I realized that you can be yourself and you know, still be you that's when i realized it and also like just the violence and you know me wanting to be there for my son my kids like i had i got three children my first my first child was really a learning experience for me i'm not going to say i was the greatest dad i'm not going to say i was the worst dad but i was still outside in the streets wanting to mangle with women and you know just be young and be in the in crowd when i realized that i became a man is when I just got, I got tired. I knew it was no longer about me, bro. You feel me? It was about my kids, bro. 
It was about making sure they was happy, you know, um, being a positive role model to them, knowing that they watch everything that I do. I have two boys, you feel me? One thirteen and one six, and they watch everything that I do. So I can't be out here indulging in the fitness and the own um, and all the, the 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 negative activities that been going on out this joint. You feel me? Like it's been it's a lot of, of nonsense. It's one of them things I always like is be throwing out there. At people is like you said. I got two kids. I got you. Got two boys. I got two girls. Everybody always say uh, they're young. They don't know. You can sit there and think about the aunt, uncle, or whoever you had when you was five. Right. And remember vividly the perfume she wore, the kind right. of coffee he drunk, the way he walked, the way he talked, and everything about that person because they made you feel so safe and so secure. So why the hell do you think your kid is eight and they don't remember shit from when they was six or when they was four? Like right. when you said this, right. when you did this, and when you was always saying and doing this and just thinking they don't know. So that's right. one of them things we always be having like a misconception with is – you got to remember that them kids ain't dumb. Like they absolutely, man, absolutely. And every everything you do, they paying attention to. That's um, correct. Couple couple things you touched on there. I told Yacht this on the episode. Like I said, I think Yacht was on like episode four or five. Uh, so it's probably time to get Yacht back on. Um, absolutely. When I was, I tell people I was Muslim when it wasn't cool to be Muslim. Right. And Yacht daughter was in my class, and she wore a kimar. Right. So in my head, I always told him, I said, I never told you this. I never said nothing about it, but it was like, all right, I'm cool because she's doing it too. Right. And now I feel like I can't allow anything to happen to her because she's in here with me. And that's my Real job right. to protect her. Real and right. I felt like that in Smith in the six, uh, six in the first grade, <laughs> like second grade, like on that type of time. Real so talk. Like, that's something that I threw out the yacht on the episode. Uh, yeah, man. He definitely was a big role model of mine, man. Like just his posture. The way he carried things, the way he was on is when we was doing wrong and not just turning the cheek. You feel me? Like a lot of other guys did, man. Just give up on you instantly. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't like that. Shot, big Real shout tough. out to Yacht, man. Big shout out to Real Yacht. Right. Um, the kids, though, definitely. I mean, your kids definitely change your perspective because, like I said, I had two girls. So, you're still doing, like you said, you're still in the mix. You're still doing too much. And it's like, ultimately, I ain't going to want nobody to do this to her. I don't right. want her to see that any of these things are being done to her mom to so normalize it to make her think make her think it's cool, way. man. Like this it's is normal. Cool. This is this is what you should uh, yeah, this is the norm. You right. Do when you become a little older. So right. like those type of things do make you tighten up. But for me to answer the question, my fault. <clears throat> I had a burp and come out. Uh, for me, it was my dad dying. My uncle and my dad was like my two guys, and my uncle and my dad probably died maybe like eight nine months apart. Right. And that kind of put a void as far as the whole family situation goes. Absolutely. And it was like somebody got to step into that role. Somebody got to be the one that you call when something is wrong, when you need somebody to talk to this little cousin or this nephew or this one just needs a little help with this, that or whatever. Like somebody got to be that person and that person just became me. And it's it might sound a little corny, but it, I mean, the facts is the facts. We're at right. the cemetery burying my dad. My man taps me and say, yo, your mom is crying. My mom has probably cried in front of me maybe four or five times in my life. That's he strong. tells me that, and it says to me, that's your responsibility now. You got to be the one to go handle that. Absolutely. I get up out of the hole from getting, you know, you know how do we do genesis. Nah. I'm over here now, you know, consoling my mom because this is the role. This is, like I said, it becomes that real that fast that right. somebody has to step into that role, and all right, it's just me. Absolutely. Like, you, can't, you can't let your whole family structure uh, fold just because there's nobody there. Same Absolutely. thing, like I take that same attitude towards like I was always the boy, like you said, with the community as far as the way things is going here. We hitting 500 murders a year, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. It's absolutely. I was always the boy that's like, it's nothing that you could tell these young boys, right? So kind of got to the point where it's like you start having kids, and now your kids is in school and here, there, and everywhere, and it's like you can't really have that mentality. It got to be a point where. If I can grab this one or two young boys, the same thing like I just said about the kids, where your kids is paying attention to all the stuff that you do. You going to work every day. The young boy live across the street sees that you go to work every day. Right. You come home hurting every day. The young boy down the street sees that, like, well, damn, old head is out there doing, you know what I'm saying? He's out here getting it. He's not just standing here with these dudes. Like, right. So it was one of them things where it was like, all right, well, if I can get one, if I can get two of them, if I can get three of them, it's like, same That's way with cool. we was young. That's right. cool. Yeah. 
Because the right. same way we was tough. young, it's, it's like tough to reach out and get everybody in the neighborhood. And they ain't listening at 16. Like you yeah. said, you lost your mom at 16. So at 16, you already think you've grown. Now you lost I'm your born. mom. You're I'm not far listening gone to nothing 16. nobody's saying. I'm far this, gone at 16. The stuff that people are telling you at 16 don't click till you 25, though. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, bro. You ain't telling no lie, man. You ain't so telling no like, lie. Man. Yeah, so it'd be like, damn, I get why he was saying that. I get why she was saying that. I get why old head kept telling me that, and I wasn't paying no attention to it until you become the one going, yo, young boy. <laughs> like, you know, right. head, like, damn, that's crazy. I'm on that tip now. We filling in the void, man. <laughs> you got to fill in the voice, like you said. Real talk, man, because it's real wicked out here, man. And I, like, don't get me wrong, it always been violence, and it always been them, them, them guys, them young guys that was, you know, the ones that wanted to torture everybody or wanted to be bullies and all that. But that was fights. You might got rolled on and stuff like that. Now it's like more so of like they rolling on you with guns now. <laughs> See, it's the, like the four or five is, people shooting one person. You know what I'm saying? The thing, the thing it was with us was you knew if you go to this block, you know what it is over there. Right. You know, if you go to that part of the city, you know what it is over there. Right. And you knew this walkway right here is where the kids is going to school, whether it was on Absolutely. our side of the tracks or your side of the tracks. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, you know that these couple of areas, all of these kids going up Christian Street, going to Pierce. All the kids right. going up Christian Street is going to Smith and going to Barrett. All Absolutely. the ones going up like Jackson Street is going to uh, Vare. Like, so you knew these areas is nothing going on because this is the kids now. Right. Because it got the, it's so much to the point of babies having babies on top of that. It's just, it's no like nobody's educating each other on them different situations and nobody's listening to nothing. Right. Even the niggas that they call in old heads ain't even nobody's old head. They just older. Again, like I said in the beginning, uh, everybody has a birthday every year, but they don't mean that you got no older, no mature, no better. You know what I'm That's saying? a fact. You could be 46 and he ain't got it figured out. And you know still and still be immature. <laughs> Copy. But and but and, and, and you also and you know what another thing, hype? We had um see a lot of things brought us close to each other. Like, like, like we had True League, we had basketball leagues over uh 27th Street, uh Wharton. We had, yeah. yeah, we had we had uh St. Charles skating ring we used to go to. So like we had situations where it's though like created friendships. You feel me? Or yeah, at least kids to be kids. At least created awareness of damn. I don't know him personally, but I know his name. Man, him all right. We on the same basketball team over choose. And he from mm -hmm. here, but I'm over here. But we both good in basketball. So we click like this because we on the same team. We had those things. And today we don't have them things. We don't we don't have the things that kids can, can can socialize together with and get a chance to get an understanding of each other and know who each other are and um create friendships man because like I said I'm from one side of the tracks you from the other side of the track but we always click mm -hmm. we always click we met up over choosing this what's up bro what's up bro and then the, the funny thing on is two. every time we see each other now the only thing we always say is like it ain't like it was when we was kids For real talk, and, man. The, and the thing is though like the stuff we talking about was the kids but was not to cut kids. you off, not to cut you off, bro. But you know why? You know why it's not the way it is? Because don't nobody know each other. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody around each other enough to even know each other is or figure out if they even like each other or not. You know what I'm saying? It's more so as, damn, I got a problem with him. He's from some, some such and such. Oh, I don't know him. F him. Do what you're gonna do to him. I don't know him. I have no clue yeah. who he is. He's from versus if I had a problem or my if one of my friends had a problem with somebody, your brother or something, and you're like, oh, that's Quill, friend. Oh, that's Quill, homie. No, let me call Quill up and let me see if I can situate this situation real fast like and calm this, this whole, it's no more of that because they don't have nowhere that they can come together and get at least an idea of who each other, who each other are, you feel me? Or, or, or see if they even got the same type of likes and and, and, and things that they love. Because it ain't no doubt in my mind. It ain't no doubt in my mind that the same person that's out here transgressing against the other person might got something that they both, how can I say Got it? in common. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? They might view life the same way. 
You see what I'm saying? We might like the same basketball. We might like basketball. We both might be the same. As we good both might think Steph Curry the best ball in the world, yeah. You see what I'm saying? But if we don't get a chance to even figure out or know, then how are we going to care about each other? You feel what I'm saying? How are we going to be able to stop something if we don't know each other? And that's and that's and that's here's the thing with that. Like I said, the babies having babies on top of each other is the problem. It's bad old heads. Right. Oh, real old heads will tell you when you 11, like, young boy is crazy. He's going to go this way, and it's nothing that we can do about it. Right. But this other one that's his cousin that's always with him, his friend, you're really good. You can't come over here. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. You go play ball. Yeah. Play some new sneaks, we got you. You we need have- a game, we'll be there. But you right. can't come over here. This is not your lane. Now, right. With bad old heads, bad the bad old heads is like, hey, just come on. They letting anybody in. So now, right. like you said, you get a situation where two young boys is arguing. They don't even know each other to know if you don't like the young boy or not. Right. You don't even know if y'all got a problem or not. I keep Absolutely. telling people, like, as far as doing this, like, I talk to so many people from so many different cities and the different countries and all of that. It's like, you can meet a nigga from Houston who think exactly like you. Y'all going to click instantly because y'all look at the world the same way. You right. and this boy from... Tasker, you and this boy from Fifth Street, you and the boy from anywhere could click and be completely tied in because y'all look at the world the same way, but y'all will never know that if y'all don't ever communicate. Like you said, we put in a situation where we were allowed to be kids. Where right. yeah, we're gonna be out here all summer hooping together. And right. I might not have knew you June 6th when we started, but on August the 4th when the playoffs start, that's my man. Real and talk. For the, <laughs> and for the rest of forever, every time I see him, it's gonna always be love. Real if, talk, I see if, if I see his son on the bus stop, I'm going to pick him up type time. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> like you said, these days now, everything is so sectioned off and everybody is so leery of everything and everybody, you can't even have them type situations. Like, you'll see a young woman like, damn, that's cuz son, but he don't know me. Right. Like, and you don't I know thought, how you're going to take it if you, you say what's up. You don't know how you're going to take it. I called my man one day. I said, yo, hey, bro, your daughter is out here on Federal Street. It's like... 1230, school ain't supposed to be out yet. He said, oh, no, she get out early on this day. Good looking, though. She don't know me. I can't tell her. Right. Get in the car. What are you doing? But I can call her dad and say, hey, bro, yo, she's out here. What is she doing out here? Right. (laughs) Facts, bro. Facts. But these niggas, this this type of generation, they don't have that type. And it's, like, sad because it makes you, like, what the hell is it going to be for my kids when they got Real talk, man. Real talk. And it's, like, everybody wanting to saying they want to move here. I want to move away from here. It's going on everywhere, though. It's like you're going to move your child somewhere else, and it's just a different type of stuff going on over there. We got to find a way to fix it in be- and like inside our urban community because that's where it's going on at, for real, for real. It's going on in the urban community. So no matter where you move at in the United States, everybody got an urban community, bro. You feel mm-hmm. me? It's gun violence going on everywhere. Yeah, we hitting 500. But you got Chicago hitting five hundred. You got you got you got Michigan. You got uh, 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 Grand Rapids, Michigan, and Flint, Michigan hitting four hundred. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You got Minnesota hitting three fifty. It's still going on everywhere we go at. So it's like you can't run from it. We could try to put our kids in better, you know, better communities and all that. But everywhere you go at it, it, it is violence. So we at some point we got to just try to we got to begin with the root and fix it in, in, inside our own circle inside our own village, you feel me? That's why I said you got to try to tap into that one, two young boys. Like, I can't tell you how good it make me feel. Like, uh, I'm talking to my man and he like, he posted something about like, uh, he posted something about like, um, he don't got no OGs or nothing like that. And he was like, the reason why I said that is he said, you always looked out for me as a young boy, but you was never inviting me to nothing negative or stupid. Like, even when I was a kid, you would tell me certain shit and it would be like, well, why is he saying that? Because this one's just trying to get me a, a pack or whatever. But he like, was never on that tip. <laughs> and he's like, you will always say like, nah, y'all should do this or y'all should do that. And he's like, it, it clicks for me a little later. And he was like, I'm glad you did that. Because now he's doing the same thing. Like, he got a young boy too. And he's like, if I could steer these two young boys, then we good. And I'm like, that's what, this, right, that's what it's all about. Like, and imagine, yeah. imagine if it was 10 people like that, then that's what, 20, 40 young that's boys? That's 20, man. yeah. And that, you feel me? 20, 40 people 
can change the whole situation now. Real talk, man. Real talk, but bro. One, one or two, one or two or three of us can change a couple of houses. We can't change the whole situation, but right, you got to get people to really like realize like what the hell is going on out here because like it's, like they got the shit with the kids in Texas with the niggas running. Wicked, bro. And all Wicked. Like, Wicked. Wicked. Ain't no way in hell y'all allowed that to go on. Wicked, like, bro. I don't even want to talk about that. That's just, you know what I'm saying, my my daughter is nine, and man, I go to jail happily. You tell me, but you see, we can go on and on and on about about like what we really saying today, and it's like, damn, ain't still nobody like really paying attention, or like, ain't nobody trying to fix it. Like, ain't nobody that cold hearted. You feel me? I don't give a fuck what the situation is. You cannot be that cold hearted to just turn the cheek when. Kids, your kids' age. Yeah, it's babies. <laughs> the kids, your yeah. kids' age is, is just being lifeless out this joint, man. Just yeah. losing their lives before they even started. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, like at what point is like guys is going like, just come on, man. Like let's let's step it up a little bit, man. Just a little bit, man. At what point is niggas going to mature? It's all about maturing. It's all Real about talk. seeing the bigger picture. It's all about you Real recognizing talk, that whatever I'm doing ain't working, and I got to switch shit up. Not just stubbornly going, this is the way I always did it, because this is the way my dad always did it. This is the way my cousins always did it. We're all right, um, man. Create instruction. Right, let's switch it up now and talk a little bit about what you got going on as far as something we try to trying to do to help out the situation in the community and the kids. Talk okay. to us about the basketball camp. All right. Well, I started this um, I started this camp called Let Us Help Us. Free basketball camp. It's totally free. I actually started the last year. This year will be the second annual, which will start June 18th. We'll be signed ups at Marion Anderson, 1030 to 2 to 1230 from ages 5 to 17, boys and girls, all accepted. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why I basically started this, I had a conversation with this with, with this guy that I called my old head from um 17th and his name Herm. Everybody call him Herm. Um shout out to Herm, man. But um he always hit me with this quote. Uh, you got people that's talkers and you got people that's doers. And for like the last four to five years, man, I always complimented. I try to find my passion, something that I really, really like to do. And I love kids. Like I love, like, like I said, I came from like a troubled little background as far as like juvenile being a delinquent. So I always told myself that I always would like to help them type of children. People that just was like, Caught a bad break, like losing their mom. Yeah, or losing somebody their, didn't need somebody didn't you need see what some I'm help. saying? Yeah. Right. So um for four or five years, I'm sitting there, I'm like, man, what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do. I want to work with kids, but I don't got the degree. I don't got the I didn't go to college and stuff like that. So I don't have the necessary tools to you know to go in there, to go right into St. Gabe's or or Glenn Mills type, because they want some type of credits. So I'm like, all right. I don't got time for school right now. I'm not on school. So what I'm going to do? All right, I thought. And then I had the conversation with Herm, and he told me what he was saying. And I contemplated, like, man, I'm going to start a camp. I'm going to start a camp. Three years go by, I'm going to start a camp. One day I woke up last year, man, it was around about a week before Mother's Day, actually. I got up one day and said, man, I'm going to start my camp. So I promoted it on my uh, my social media, my Instagram, and I got a lot of, like, feedback, good feedback. Yeah, do that start and bring my kids. My kids need something to do. They don't, all they want to do is play video games. And I need, I'm, I'm bringing them. So I'm like, bet. Mother's Day weekend, I started Sunday last year, which was Mother's Day. And you know, it was a success. I give out free food to the kids every weekend, um, free beverages. Um, I give them a cookout once a month, you know, to show their appreciation for believing in me. You know what I'm saying? Because they could be anywhere. They could be playing the game. They could be outside and dodging and whatever, because mm -hmm. in today's world, we easily manipulated by what we see and what everybody else is doing. You feel me? So they could easily be out running around or being and dodging in whatever they're dodging in, but they choose to come with me every Saturday and Sunday. So I give them a cookout once a month, um, every month until it's over with. And um, I basically started the Letters Help Us Camp, man, because I was just simply tired, bro. I was simply tired of seeing kids with rest in peace next to their name every time I jump on social media, bro. I got tired mm -hmm. of seeing kids ages of 13, 14 with no future or no, not even no 
nothing to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? It's just waking up the same thing. I'm going outside to be on the corner. Or I and wanted I'm to give them to say, something different. And it ain't even that they don't have no futures, that they don't have an example of what the future can look like. The right. examples that they have is something negative, or something BS, or something that's not going to be sustainable. And it's like, like you saying, giving that kid a chance to do something. Right. It's one of them things like even trying to explain to people about ball. Like you said, we both loved ball and played ball until we couldn't play no more. Basketball created it's, friendships, bro. But it's so many different li- it's so many different livelihoods. You realize that now as you get older, it's so many different livelihoods in basketball. You could become right. an agent, you could become a trainer, you could become the the nigga who makes the racks for the balls. You right. could become the manufacturer of other balls. There's so many Absolutely. different ways to be to dominate the game without getting 30. And those right. type of careers last way longer than you'll be able to get through. Absolutely. You know what I'm Absolutely. So that's even like bro. something like shout out to Moan doing the pro am over Jersey. Like shout out to Moan, man. Shout out to so many, more. so many different ways that you can dominate the game without getting 30. And when you first said to me, we run into each other at Juma, and you said to me about the camp, and I said, That's an episode. I said that, as you that said was the that, first thing that came up, Jamal. As soon as you said that, I said, <laughs> nah, we gotta get that out there. Cause like I said, I did. The first couple episodes, Yacht was on the first four or five episodes because, like, Real this tough. is something we got to get out there. Even Real though this tough, drink goes, around, my drink goes around the country, around the world, but here people need to hear that. Here people need to hear it from Dallas, Houston, uh, Detroit, wherever, and implement Absolutely. those things at home too. But I wanted you to come on here and talk about that because one, as soon as you told me, I love that type of stuff, bro. Listen, def- man. Like, Especially once you have kids, it makes you look at these kids differently. It's like even the little boy or the little girl in your child's class was like, I don't know him, but I know him. And it's right. like, damn, young boy done got a little taller. You start to see that they figure <laughs> life out and it makes you feel good about it. Like, Real talk, man. Real talk, bro. And it's like, it's like at the same time, man, like, like I I I know basketball created a lot of friendships in my life. Whether mm-hmm. it's South, not even just South Philly, because I done been on traveling teams. I done, I done met guys in North Philly that's still my friends to the day. You know what I'm saying? Through basketball and through me traveling and meeting different people and seeing stuff just outside of just South Philly and Philadelphia, period, man. This is a bigger thing world. Too, is getting past the two corners of your block. <laughs> Absolutely, like you, man. Like you said, that 12 year old who never seen past, he never seen past watching that. Real he rap, can't bro. imagine what the world looked like on 38th and Diamond. Like, and, and it ain't even nowhere, but it's like, damn, y'all got, like, anything. Like, it's just Anything besides look. what's going on now, you feel me? Anything, yeah. And, and, like, and go ahead. I just wanted them to feel the need to just, you know, have something, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, to really have something. Yeah, y'all still holding this down. Y'all 25 years in, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He's still holding this down. But he need help now. You see what I'm saying? He need mm-hmm. help, bro. And, and I and I feel like I feel like I needed to step up. You feel me? I, I I ain't like what was going on. I don't like the violence that's going on. I don't like kids killing kids. Because when I was coming up, kids wasn't really killing kids the way they are now. You feel me? I was able to, you, yeah, to travel. We had like we had like damn that happened. Yeah. And man was like, damn, man was right. like. You be telling you'll be telling somebody about something happening out southwest, and it'd be three joints happening out north. And be like, no, it's not that one. Like you be, it'd be so <laughs> many similar situations, and they all be bad. But yeah, so I, that's that's basically what made me, bro. It, it made me like, I want. I felt like I had to do something, and if I can keep 50, 60 kids off the street, man, from I, I you like last year I started it was from ten thirty to twelve, bro. We used to have so much fun. We start stopping at two. So we would start going from 1030 to two. And then it started going from we'll get there 1030 and we won't leave till five at, in the afternoon, in the evening. Like they, the mm. kids wanted to continue to play basketball and just be around each other all day. And then it went from me originally starting the camp Saturday and Sunday to now I got basketball teams. So I went from starting the basketball camp to having a 13 and under and a 17 and a, you know what I'm saying? Mm. This is because the kids was having so much fun and they was enjoying being around each other. I done had kids from North Philly. I got kids in my camp from Southwest. I got kids in my camp from uh, South Philly, all over the city, bro. And it's like, 
I didn't even realize how, how how bad they really needed something. You feel me? I wasn't expecting to have 60 people last year, bro. I wasn't. Like, I thought I was going to have a cool little 20, 25. But, like, the moms, since the sense of, the moms and the dads see the sense of urgency and see that their kids, like, basically need something and need a hobby, that they was all for it, bro. I don't, I didn't ask for no money. My camp is totally free. I don't ask a mom to give me a dollar, bro. Like, mm -hmm. I don't ask the mom and dads to give me a dollar because it's not, it's not about the money with me, bro. It's about more of my time, a little bit of my time and, and, and just their time. You feel me? And the mom yeah. showing their commitments by getting them there. You feel me? It's just I don't want no money. Yeah. That's it, bro. I don't want no money. I want to keep these kids out of trouble. I want them to learn something. I want to put, I want to bring back the love of basketball back in the city of Philadelphia. We was a basketball city, bro. We used to follow our basketball players. We still following the older kids now. We still following. Shout out to um Scoop Jardine. Shout out to uh Wale. Um, shout out to uh Jamir Hanna, J Master J, Hanif Edwards. Um, shout out to all them guys that's still holding it down and being a role model for these young guys that's still mm -hmm. playing basketball because we still following them. We don't really have no young guys to follow in basketball like that because ain't nobody really playing. Everybody want to be a gangster now. Everybody want to be a tough guy now, yeah. No <laughs> it's <doubt>. like, it's <laughs> crazy, bro. Basketball was Philly. It was Philly. We played sports. Yeah. And it's like, it don't, the, the, the park's not even filled no more, bro. So I'm just, bro, like, you see, can't... Our, our park got flowers in it now. We don't even, they took the courts out of 24th Street Park. We don't even you got no courts. And, <laughs> like, and you know, we're not getting no help. Like, I don't want to put, I don't want to want to sound, I don't want to sound racist. I don't want to sound um, ignorant or none of that. I just want to just, from my observations, the city not getting no help. They, they defunding programs. They closing down all the skating rings in the city. Like, Bro, I rode we, past shoes yesterday. They took the course down. They not making it no better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, how can how can we set the, how can we set our future up for success when y'all not putting the necessary tools in the city to make us successful? Like like yeah. where the after school programs at? Like where the um where the where the when I was coming up we had programs to go to after school and they take us on trips. We was going to the, the Six Flags. Like when I never stuff, really went to Six Flags with my family. I went with the programs. Like, you got to think about it like this though. It ain't even about, like you just saying, as far as you doing the camp, it's not about the funding. It's about somebody picking up saying, we need to make a change for these 20 to 25 kids, and I'm going to be the person to do that. Right. Because you can't wait for the city funding, the government funding, and none of that. You got to have those individuals who look big picture and think, yo, I can't keep seeing this go on, and I got to do something to change that. And Bro, until talk, you have enough people who think like that, you're going to keep having people who will say, like you just said, oh, he told you, it's thinkers and doers. Everybody got an opinion and everybody got something negative to say. When Real talk. This book, what are you doing and what's positive about it? That was my whole problem when niggas was kneeling for the flag and all of that after George Floyd and all of that. I don't care about nobody kneeling. What yeah, you doing? Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, yeah, what are you on the ground doing? We don't need yeah. nobody just kneeling and raising a fist. We need niggas who are actually moving and making things happen. All right, Real talk, man. Like, Real talk. That's, the, that's what you're talking about, though, is it wasn't no funding for them situations. That was people getting up saying, yo, look, we got to do something about that. People like Real my right, dad bro. would do like rallies and walks through the whole hood and, yo, stop the violence type Jones. They wasn't getting no funding for that. They was just some old heads getting together saying, this is not happening no more. Yeah, and this is what we going to do. And this is what we going right, to do. Man. And I ain't going to lie, bro. I ain't going to front. I cannot, with none of this, be possible, man, if it wasn't the support from the my support cast and my team, man. Um, I got a couple good people that's by my side, man, unconditionally, man. Shout out the logo, uh, Steve, Steve, Stevie. That's like basically my co-founder and let us help us. You know, he put all the work in with me, man. Like I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. If it wasn't for my Aunt Yen, my Aunt Yen there every weekend, she supports, she helps, um, she helps me with the snacks and you know, the food. Shout out to um Coach Neat. Shout out to Coach Fatia. Um, who else? Shout out to Coach Markey. Shout out to Coach Shanika. Like this is my supporting cast, man. They come out every Saturday and Sunday. 
and they hold me down to the fullest, bro. Like all I'm there, all I have to do is show up and coach and, and help these kids. They do all the all the in-betweens, all the behind the scene things, as far as making the kids got unlimited refreshments, making sure they got um snacks while they working out. Um uh, we take them swimming every weekend, bro. We take them. I took 50 kids. Me and my staff took 50 kids last year to see Space Jam, bro. Uh, mm. it, it wouldn't have been possible with just me. With just one car, it wouldn't have been possible. You see what I'm saying? So mm. I would not be able to hold this down if it wasn't for my support cast. Hey, so it, listen. Uh, big shout out. And let's give a round of applause. Thanks, you know man. For all of for them. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Because I know you're the face of the situation, but I love and respect the fact that you brought all of them up now. Uh, since you brought them up, when you send them all this episode, tell them we only accept five stars on whatever streaming platform that they prefer. We don't they do gonna listen. They gonna, one thing about my, they going to put five stars without them even saying it because they they know. Like, they just support and me that much. You know what I'm saying? You said the 18th is the first day that you're going back? June 18th. So, all right, June 18th is, is, is the sign-ups. Um, I haven't got the website up and running, and that's my fault. Um, I, I've been dragging my feet, but I, I'm also dealing with life at, at myself. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm still dealing with life. Um, I'm only human. So, I didn't get the website up. So, um, June 18th, we will be doing sign-ups. I would need everybody in attendance to sign their children up, or even if their children are not in attendance, at least come and sign them up because I want them to be signed up. I want to have a head count on how much that I, I how much snacks and, and, and beverages that we need to get. Mm -hmm. So that's why I need all the kids to be there the 18th. We will be going eight the uh, Saturdays and Sundays starting the 18th, all the way until the summer is over with. So it's every Saturday and Sunday at 10 30 to about 12 30. Um yeah, like I said, I throw a cookout for them once a month, bro, to show my appreciation to them. Um, we, we we go away. We go on trips. Uh, we go swimming. So we won't just be playing basketball. We'll definitely be going swimming to keep cool. And, you know, we just a family, bro. Like, I'm trying to raise a village, man. And, and um, nah, my team, I'm we're trying to help. We're trying to raise the village. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely have to slide. Because, uh, again, like, as soon as you brought it up, like I said, that was something that, I love the fact that as soon as you said it, I'm like, nah, that's it. And that's what we on. So I'm definitely had to slide down a couple of these Saturdays and Sundays. I know what shit I got. You see, I got a million things going on. I can't yeah, commit to every for sure. week. But listen, man, see. listen, bro. I'm glad I'm glad you was able to put me on your platform, bro, to, you know, just to get it out there, man. And hopefully this would motivate a guy that was just thinking the same thing that I was thinking to just go do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because my ultimate goal, bro, is I want to have a let's, a let's have a let's help us. I want to let's help us camp. I'm back. All right. I want to mm -hmm. let's help us. I want to let us help us youth center, bro. Like, I, like that's, that's my ultimate goal. I want to create a let us help us youth center. Something similar to the YMCA. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're going to go, I want to go through the same proper steps. I don't want no kids to spend no money. You know what I mean? I don't want no moms to come out their money. I, I want to go through the insurance the same way that they going, the YMCA. You know what I'm saying? But I want it to be a black-owned thing, man. And, and, and I want one in every part of the city, bro. That's my ultimate goal. And you know, be that. And listen, if it's if it's anything I can do to help out with that situation, you already know what it is. Hey um, man, we're gonna push P until we get there, bro. You already know. Yeah, uh, you know throw out the Instagram one one time before we roll so everybody do know where to get it from. All right, um, where you to, can where follow me. Sign up. Uh, you can sign. Uh, listen, you can, if you got any problems or anything, any concerns, you can go to Let Us Help Us. That's underscores between every every word. Let us help us basketball camp. Um, you can also follow me at Quilly underscore one AC, Q U I L L Y underscore one AC for any um information. But um, yeah, that's that's basically it though, bro, man. Like we going all summer, we going hard. We try to keep as many um boys and girls off the street. Uh and man, we just trying to help, man. We, we, we ain't talking no more. We been doers, bro. Copy that. You said from ages five to 17, correct? Five to 17, boys and girls. You know what I'm saying? And we there every Saturday and Sunday. Copy free that. refreshments, free lunch for the kids. Um, um, we're not asking for um no money, but those donations would be greatly appreciated. 
know what I'm saying? But we're not asking for nothing. We just asking for you to bring your kids out and let them enjoy themselves. Because they, I promise you, they're going to have fun and they're going to want to definitely come back. Copy that. Quill, appreciate you coming on, bro. Oh, man. Thank you for having me, bro. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Listen, this is my first interview ever, bro. You don't know how nervous I am. (laughs) I was trying not to curse. No, you can, bro. No, listen, you can cuss and all of that. You know what I'm saying? I'm a professional paid talent. I've been doing this for years, so I got you. That's episode 68, y'all. We are out. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up.